What's going on, guys? Welcome, Welcome to the podcast. Back with another episode. Episode four. Today we're outside of my house, outside of my basement. I am going to my basement. By only Mike, Mike. Mike, good to see you again. How are you? I'm fantastic. You look good, man. You look good. Fantastic. How are you? I'm great. I'm dealing with some caffeinated now. Mike usually brings me a rain to start things off. So. Today we have a nice peach rain. Everyone show your rain. And uh, directly across from me, we have Steve Melly. Steve is the owner, and he opened up his own uh, gym here in Southampton. Steve, how are you today? Man, I'm doing excellent. Doing excellent. Yeah. Thanks for having me on, guys. Of course. It's our pleasure. So Steve is our first guest ever. It's an honor. On a new segment that we're going to call Local Flavor. The, the name could be better, but it's good. I like the concept. Everything's right. work in progress. So let's talk about the concept. So if, you, if you're if you one of our three listeners to this podcast, it's likely because you know Cole or I personally, which also means that you are local in some respect to, like, the Bucks County or Montgomery County area. So uh, with this segment, basically the – big purpose here is that we kind of want to highlight people in the field who you know maybe they're a personal trainer uh, maybe they work in nutrition maybe they have their own gym like steve we want to highlight these local people in the field who are doing an excellent job may not have heard of but you should know exactly who they are and this is why we're here today He's going to drop some knowledge bombs on a cover areas of strength and conditioning that Cole and I probably don't know as much as he does. Super nice intro. Thank you so much, Mike. So, <laughs> Steve, if we just want to get right into it, it, can you give a little bit of a background of your educational bring up the backstory kind of where did everything begin before if you will absolutely uh fun fact about me is that i actually went to school um at the university of Trenton. hold on shout out the uh, 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 shout out oh my god that's all right yeah, it's, it's a there, right jersey <laughs> Yes, I swear, yes, yes, I swear guys, it's off a great start. You're going to have to come to the gym to um, see this. Yeah, 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 because obviously uh, my motor skills aren't great. <laughs> uh, so I went to Strand as an English major. Uh, yeah, I don't know why. I don't know why I did. Um, that was probably uh, the silliest thing I've ever done in my life. Um, but I went to Strand and um, played baseball there for four years. Um, read a lot of books, and a lot of papers. Uh, didn't do tremendously well papers and stuff. Um, and I do get my master's degree um, in English literature and secondary education. Also, just not the greatest move. Okay. So, great start there for my education. Uh, but then I also worked uh, for the University of Scranton there for three years. When I got my master's, uh, I started high school English. Fun, fun fact. Uh, the love teacher, and I really liked it. I actually really liked it. I uh, liked working work with the kids, and uh, and it was fun. I got to you know kind of be myself in the classroom. Uh, the one thing I didn't like though is the uh, the whole like administration politics of school. So I was like, screw that. Uh, and I moved back down here to Philly, um, on the area. Uh, and then I managed a baseball facility called All Star Baseball Academy. I don't know if anybody's heard of that. Um, did pretty well. I made a lot for the, the company, and apparently they didn't pay me any money. So, <laughs> so I wasn't like really uh, happy about that. We saw saw uh, things differently in terms of uh, the product they were putting out, they wanted me to put out. So I kind of was like, you know what? Let me let me. Uh, let me stop making all these people with tons of money and stop playing by these people with rules. And we tried to do my own thing. And the, the time being, when I, came, when I became a coach in college, uh, I actually started to get really into strength and conditioning. So that's really um, started to kind of be fascinated with the body and, and 
the human performance, sports performance. Um, because going to college, like a noodle, you know what I'm saying? I'm uh, 5, 9, 45. I graduated high school, which is like not good, obviously, for an athlete, you know? Um, yeah, it, it never struck me until I got to school when I was like the smallest dude on the field of all time. Um, so throughout my career, I started really getting to, you know, dedicate myself to the gym. And then I got kind of put in charge of it as a coach. And then that uh, as a springboard to so what I wanted to do. Uh, so when I left All Star, um, before I left, I started to study for regular CTC, the personal training exam from uh, the NCA, which is the National Conditioning Association. It's kind of like the standard in the field. So, um, like for me, I'm a nerd, so I, I wanted to be like over prepared for the test. So I studied my uh, my butt off for like six months, took the test, passed, and then as soon as I had that tools, I was like, I'm going to go out. So went out on my own, found a gym in the area that would let me space, do my own thing, and then I started trying to build a book. And, uh, you know, and now we're here. So long road to get to where I'm at. So you kind, of, you kind of just ended on, and now we're here. But it's, it's not, not just now that we're here. Like, like this is true. this is huge. You opening your own gym. Um, I mean, that's something. That's something that I think a lot of people love the idea of. That's something a lot of people would, I think, like to do someday. At least people who are interested in this industry. Sure. But not everyone understands just how hard it is to. For sure. Uh, take that step to get into this. So, tell us a little bit about your your journey from being uh, just a general personal trainer to opening a gym. Kind of tell us how long your personal training um, before you opened this place. Tell us about how basically when you knew that it was time to take the next step um, financially, even psychologically. Like, what did you what did you have to get? in place and prepare for to know this is the time I want to open my own place? Okay, a lot of questions. <laughs> I got it up there. Uh, no, yeah, um, so I always knew from the jump um, that I wanted to do my own thing. And I, I've always liked leadership positions. Um, I love being a coach and I, and I love, you know, having the responsibility to, to you know, kind of lead I mean, that's just something that from a young age, I've always thought that I've um, kind of been blessed with. So, like, I, I wanted to, you know, kind of set my standards, set my own rules, and, you know, kind of push a, um, like, a environment that I wanted. Um, so, I always knew in the beginning that I would eventually love to go and start my own place. So, that was a big for um, me. Did I ever think it was going to happen? I don't know. It was a, uh, it's been a long, long road. So I started personal training um, at a gym. Uh, and I started dealing with all types of age groups to start. Um, and then, like, about a year into it, I started studying my CSCS, which is the Certified Strength Conditioning uh, Coach um, Specialist. So I, uh, and that's through an SCA as well. And that's like that right there is like the best certificate. Uh, that's good. Certification. Um, that you get. Um, so I wanted to get that. And if you want to, if you want to, you know, do a college strength conditioning coach, you have to have that certification by your side, or like an advanced in field. Um, and I just couldn't afford to go back to school because I'm still saying. Um, from my previous one. Um, so I, yeah, the CSCS was mandatory for me. So I got that about a year in, and um, and that's when I started to focus on, hey, let me put out my um, athletic background um, and my athletic base. So, um, luckily, with my, the, I was fortunate that All Star Baseball Academy is in the area. Like, it's in Warren, So, it's 10 minutes from where I was training people. And, you know, I, I built up a, a really, really good client base there. So, those connections helped me build a book for my, my training. Um, and so, I, I brought a lot of the guys over there from that. Um, and so I started like kind of like, cooking up something, and uh, there's don't don't get me wrong, there's like a there's some dry periods of time early on 
where I'm just like, like hey, hey you know, I might have, I might have like one. Today, but but I was really focused on just getting better. So that's like, like I'm really, really big on that. So, you know, um, I wanted to take that time that I may have had off. You know, I might not be training people and working. Um, I wanted to take that time and, and read, study and, and kind of, you know, build my knowledge too. So um, in the first few months, first year, um, slower, um, test my patience and, and stuff. But, you know, I just use that time to say, hey, let's use it wisely, get better at your craft. So I did that. Um, and then, you know, as I got a little bit further along the road, you know, my guys and girls started, you know, playing pretty well in the field. Um, they started getting looks at from colleges and stuff like that. Um, and that always helps, you know, when the kid is on the basketball court and has a game all looks different, you know, you know, you feel a little bit So I started, you know, growing base. Um, and then I was at my, my, my first gym for five years. And I knew that I had to get out where I wanted to get out um, around year three. Um, I think it was because, one, um, if anybody knows me, um, I like to kind of play by my own rules a little bit. Um, if I don't, like, uh, if I don't, like, uh, agree with, like, a authoritative, like, um, ruling, um, and, like, I ask for a book and I don't get a good reply, I don't get an answer to that question, um, has to stop me. I, I just want to make sure that my people are that my and people are good. get the best of, 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 of what they paid for. And if, and if, you know, you know the, the environment there was, was inclusive to that, and I, then I said, all right, I got to go out and, and provide an atmosphere and environment for that. So, so around year three, I kind of started to outgrow, out, outgrow um, um, the place where I was training. At. So this whole thing was, was, was tough because I started to you know, really sacrifice in terms of the things that I was doing first outside of work. Um, so, so I was, you know, you got a bunch of things outside of work, outside, um, saved up money, I wasn't going out to do anything, um, because I had the same goal of say, I want to get my foot in the gym. So I started living that, my name was in the and the first part was finding a place. So uh, it took me a year and a half of of legit searching for uh, the, the right place. And the hardest part was finding um, a place like that was like, like open to have a gym that would pass the, the township regulations, regulations and the zone voting and all that. So a lot of a lot of ups and downs with that. I had like places that were locked and I was ready to go and, and I was, you know, getting everything in line. And then they were like, oh, you're going to have to go in front of the zoning commission. Um, and they only meet the first Tuesday of every month. And um, you have to present your case. And I'm like, dude, I, I, and they were like, you might want to have a weird present. And I'm like, dude, I just want to just buy a place. I just want to work here. I just want to work here. I'm just, I'm actually, I'm going to help kids. You know? <laughs> you know, so, so it was, it was, it was, it was, it was tough. tough. It, it was like a, a roller coaster. Because there were so many times that I had it and I was ready to go, signing all the papers, and then they'd be like, Oh, you're you're not um zone B, it's the zone C dash I'm like, uh I'm reading, these, I'm reading these township code books and it's insane. Like you can only be on this side of the road and I'm oh my gosh. So it was really, really stressful. Like I'm I'm a pretty big bad cat, but I was freaking out. Um and it was it was a really tough time. Because I was still having to do, do like my training, working, um, and I didn't I didn't slack on that. That's like if ever if anything like made me like fall behind with working with uh, with my, my people, people and, like that's when it became a problem. So I had to give like um, everything I have, that. but also every little second, every little minute that I had free, I was up looking at like, maps, code books, and stuff, trying to teach myself like. Litigation. <laughs> yeah, like that. Um, so that that was tough. That was tough. It was. It took a lot of out, took a lot out of me. It was a year and a half process. Um, and I luckily stumbled upon this place in Southampton. Um, 
place we're at, we're at now. now. I was like, oh, let me go check it out on Wednesday. And I remember it was like, eight, I remember, like, eight, eight, so I my left my family, 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 I had a client, and then drove here, like, negative seven, seven degrees out. out. And, and, like, I came in, in I met the, the, the landlord, um, owner, whatever, and he took me in. And it was, it was funny, like, I've seen, I had seen so many different places, um, but then like, we opened the doors, and it was, like, there was, like, ups everywhere, and, and, and like, like, machines, like, because it was just, like, a brand new place, essentially, and, but I opened the doors, and I just knew, you know, I, I just knew, like, the cool thing about like doing all this, I, I had done blueprints um, for every so I thought. So I like I really enjoyed making layouts of gyms. So that was like really what I kind of found out. I was like, oh, I like designing a gym. Cool, you know. <laughs> and, um, I do this, this, and so I made out like blueprints for like the three places that I thought I was gonna go, and and I just had like an idea of a schematic of what I really want. And so through that, time, I learned. Um, what was necessary, what I needed to have, and then like, dude, that's just extraneous stuff. That's we don't need that. So when I when you open the doors and it's just like the first thing you see is this long runway. It's like super long, eighty-five foot, just rectangular runway. And I was like, Boom, that's awesome. Then it's out. And, and as I walk in and start walking around, I could picture the vision of my head, like, all right, this is going to be dirt, this is going to be rubber, it's right there. Um, so that was really cool. And that's when I knew. Like, boom, awesome. So, oh, okay, good, good. Somebody's saying, up. good. good. Right, yeah, so we're good. I can tell you there's someone like a sensor here. That's good. Sorry, guys. Only the best here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sensor, we got sensors. you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and so, so like, like, good, like, hey, like, I'm really interested. And he's like, all right, that's cool. And, like, we're, you know, just hit me up. And he's like, I'm also showing people later this day. I was like, oh, cool. Well, I was like, ah. so, <laughs> so I was like, there's just three more people in the next hour. Cool, man. That's awesome. Uh, so I actually went back and I had him send me like the, you know, the contract and stuff. And I'm going through the lease and, and, and the price point was, was like competitive. It was kind of topped up. Um, and so it was a little a bit above my budget. I'm not going to lie. Um, you know, I, I had a specific budget in mind. Um, and it, and it, was, it was slightly above it, and I was like, man, I don't know if I can do it. So that kind of like I went from like super high to like, oh man, again, you know. And so I actually, and my parents like called me, um, and I have parents that are ride or dies, you know, they were in my back, what, and uh, and like I was like kind of like rejected. My parents were like, oh, let's show me the place. So I, I sent them pictures. Um, they're like, yo, that's it. They're like, that's really it. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. They're like, oh, what's wrong? Like, uh, And they're like, what? What is it? And I sat down with my parents, and I sat down with my dad, and it's like, dude, listen, like, uh, if any, if like, I think it's time. He's like, you gotta go. He's like, you gotta make the jump. I know you're nervous. I know you're like worried because I'm not like a big. And they're like, I'm buying thing. Um, and and I got like all these cool loans and stuff. And, and I just, and I don't think I got to visit it like six months in, and then, uh, hey, guys, sorry, I'm out. No. Um, and my dad's like, you just got to take leave. Like, you're going to have to watch it if you do it. Um, so you just got to, it's time. And it's like, ooh, if I can't get it And he said, like, yo, if you need help, luckily, I don't help. But, like, uh, but it's always good to know that, like, hey, if, if, if push comes to shove, that, you know, I'll have somebody have my back. Yet. So, like, when my dad said that, you know, I, I took an hour that day, and I was like, I just sat with him to do this. So, you know, I got, got the, I can't uh, just wait and had to make the jump because I was kind of going nuts in my own space. Um, I'm not gonna mention anything or whatever, but it was just like it became a tough um, place to be, um, like a really tough environment, really, really bad atmosphere, and and. For anybody that knows me, I'm like a really high energy guy. Um, and I love what I do. I love work with kids. I love being able to impact their lives. And I, and I just love being in here, setting, setting the tone for the day. And I would go into work. And it was just like, even if I, I was going in, like, awesome, like, as soon as I opened the door, it would be really tough. And like, I never wanted that. You know, and that's 
That's one reason I love teaching because I was tried and I was like, I gotta deal with this and that. And like I never want to do that. Um I don't want to sacrifice like the energy that I bring. Um so, so I knew it was that it was either that or I was just gonna go crazy. So um that's why I did um when I because if I didn't do it then I was never gonna be able to do it. So um and here we are. So we're I think four five months in now. Five months and I, I opened in June first. It was my first day. Um, I spent all of May. I came in here and it's, it was completely empty, complete, just like concrete floor and wall. And that's all it was. Um, and you know, I, I've been saving up some things, I've been buying equipment um, for two years. So it was actually like it was two years. That's when it like so when I said the three years in, I knew. That's when I was like, all right, let me start going online, buying deals, let me get what I need. So I was buying dumbbells and squat racks and, and all these different things for two years. Um, which is, I didn't blame it. It took me that long because I got to pay in chunk. You know, so I didn't have to go to the bank and be like, hey, you can I get a loan? I want to run a deal. But like, uh, so I just started saving up. And, um, and it took me a solid two years to, to build a, a gym. And then I just had to here. Um, I think my parents are happy that I finally did. My parents probably pushed me because they, they had no basement. I was just storing in my parents' basement, so they couldn't like, move around and ask for clothes and stuff. So they probably were like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to put this in here. Like bringing squat racks. <laughs> uh, that's why I went my dad. was like, you got to make a jump. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was like, I want my basement back. Uh, so... So, so we just, I just moved so in here and everything in here, here and everything uh, here, uh, I did myself. I did myself. So, uh, so, and oh, my dad, my dad helped too. Shout out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, so my boss too. too. So, um, the, the crazy, crazy thing is, is like, I left place at the, the last day, day. Was my last day. And May 1st, I was on my own. And I actually wasn't out in here, here until, until May 4th. Before. So I had three days where I was like chomping at the bit, and then we were still like place up fast. Um, and so maybe like, fourth came around, and I was just like getting everything here. Um, and then I had you know lay the turf down, lay the rubber down, and put them together and everything. So the month of May, um, I really didn't see any of my athletes. So the first weeks I didn't see anybody, um, and Unfortunately, I didn't get any money the, that whole month. Um, but I didn't want to like open my doors without it being like ready to go. You know what I mean? I didn't want the first taste of the place to be uh, this dude got you know dust holes and stuff. Like there's like creatures. <laughs> so I wanted, I wanted to make I wanted to make sure that the place was like like ready to go. Um, obviously, stuff work to do some places, but it was you know. First day, they're like ready to go and, and train because that's what they're here training. They're not gonna get like tents and, and stuff, <laughs> you know. So, uh, so I took them all the month of May to just really make sure that it was good. And I got a little bit of OCD in me. Um, so if it's not up to my standard, I couldn't open the door. So that was a pretty painstaking process, but I actually love doing it. So, uh, but then and that's how we're here, you know, a lot of a lot of time. It is a lot of time, it was a long time. I'm sure. No, we love it. It's good stuff. And sure. I, it's a journey. You know what I mean. This took sure. what half a decade. Yeah, essentially. So, so I mean, old. that's the kind of you know response it requires. I mean, you had to build, had to build a book. Know that you had enough clientele that when you made sure. the switch, that you're gonna have enough. You basically gonna have a source of income that was reliable. Yeah, and sure. like you said, you're recording equipment. Yeah. You know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. And probably doing it in the smartest way possible, right? Try. Doing that in it's not just taking out a giant load right, and yeah. being, I'm doing it today. And yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, and so, like, like, that's the thing. Like, I'm a um, super analyzer, right? So, like, I'm very critical of everything. And like, I, I'm always trying to play everything out of my head. Um, and so, I'm not like an impulse guy. You know what I mean? So, like, I'm not, not like buying things on impulse. I'm, I'm mapping out, all right, like, hey, if you have it, and I have to go see and stuff like that. Um, I'm very, that's not slow, that's why I was like, you know, I need to push to get here, um, because 
you know, I was just mapping out animals in every outcome. Um, but uh, the big thing with the, with the book was that's another reason why I knew that I think it's time to leave because the mock that I, I had in place at the local place, um, my schedule was just crazy. Mm-hmm. Right? I mean, it's crazy now, but it, it, it was hindering me, right? So, like, and then the old model was like, it wasn't my place, so I couldn't I didn't have free brain that I got, you know, I could use whatever there, but in reality, I was stuck to a, like a small corner of the gym, you know, mm-hmm. it's just size this, the, this uh, corner. Um, because I was the dude doing weird stuff with, with like, with my people. So, uh, <laughs> but you're not just, you know, benching stuff. Like, Steve, really you don't want to use the ab crunch machine? You don't want this. We have three of those, Steve. So we don't want that. No, we have all this great equipment for you, Steve. You're yeah. not utilizing it. So I guess just go hang out why in that corner. Yeah, why don't you use any of the leg extension, curl, hammer, jaws? Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> so, like, yeah, I didn't use that stuff. So I was, like, stuck in a little slice of, of uh, the gym. Um, and so, you know, I was dealing with, like, one or two kids at a time. And, you know, the, the one down was that during the school year, you know, I, I, I had to deal with the school day. So I don't start seeing kids until like three or four o'clock. Um, and so, like, I did so many one hour sessions with kids um, that day. So um, I realized that, like, my big thing is um, how my model was going to change when I left. When I opened my own place, it was going to be a, a different model because um, I think that's where the field is headed, especially like my um, niche of the field, you know, like the, the bodybuilder, you know, field um, athletes, and especially dealing with like youth, um, teenagers in college. It's more of like a small group, semi private um, type model. So um, less one on one. Like I'm still getting individualized attention, mm-hmm. still personalized programming based on that individual, but they're going to be there with four or five kids. Now, um, I did that because one, this is expensive. Growing up as a kid, I was never able to do it because I just didn't have um, the funds. Like, it, 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 it's cool. I mean, it's expensive. It's a luxury, and I understand that. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to make sure that I could lower the price point so that um, the regular blue collar schmo kid could come in and get the benefits of, of a good program instead of going to, uh, you know, as you just doing whatever. Um, and I wanted to, to be able to provide that. So I didn't want to leave anybody out. And I wanted to make sure that it was at a price point where they could um, all join. So I wanted to do that. And so I had to make sure I had a, a decent base to begin with because I was going to lose a lot of money with that. You know what I'm saying? So like, I'm not going to... I wasn't going to charge my normal rate that I did with one on one when I'm bringing in four or five, six kids at a time. It's not fair to them. And so, like, if I just left with the like a smaller number where I was making do with with one on one training, um, I wasn't going to be able to keep the lights on there for uh, more than a month. You know what I'm saying? So, so I had to make sure that. But so that once I my my schedule got a little close and like I was on the you know fit people in. Didn't want to come in um, because of just like no time slots available. Um, I knew it was the time to get out, so that's another big reason why I left so that I could have yeah my athletes kind of come when they want to instead of having work schedules. You know, yeah. so that's a, that's a big thing. So that makes a lot of sense. Cole, do you have any other questions about? Steve's background or uh, his personal journey before we transition into some nuclear knowledge bombs. Yeah, so overall, Steve, if you were to give like someone that feels like maybe they're stuck in a certain situation or they've committed to a career path at now not feeling mm-hmm. happy about where they're at, what would you say to them when they're struggling to decide whether they make a leap for starting their own business? Or, oh, oh man. That's tough. We're going from being an English teacher to a personal trainer, for example. Yeah, so, okay. All right. Uh, the advice? I mean, it was tough. Like, my mid-20s was tough. Um, uh, hard, hard time. time. A lot of stuff going on. on. Um, um, so that and that was, like, like fresh out of college. Fresh out of grad, grad school. I didn't take a, a time off in between um, undergrad and grad. Um, because they gave me an opportunity to hang around with folks. Um, so, 
that was all I knew. Like that college atmosphere, the school atmosphere. And so when I got out of that and um, started teaching, started doing whatever, uh, it was like a eye-opening life shock experience. Like a lot of kids go through like mid twenties all time. Um, and then you get like a, you get hit in the face with the fact like, oh, I I, I went to school for this, and when I got out, and started doing it. It's nothing like I you know expected to be. It's like nowhere miserable. You know, and that's a big thing that people go through. You know, I think the the stat something like sixty plus percent of kids um, do something other than they get their degree. Yeah, you know, what I'm saying something like crazy like that. Yep. Um, I know the podcast doesn't isn't geared for this, but like, and there's a flaw in the education system in America for that. You know, and yeah, uh, different podcasts somewhere else. Uh, Maybe for the next time you're on. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Um, we're not just so, about getting jacked. Oh, we're also about brain brain, jacked, brain, brain games. Games. like that. Brain <laughs> games. Um, yeah. So then, so my advice is like, don't be married to a to a job. Don't be married to a, a place in life, right? Because I can tell you, I've changed so dramatically um, from where I was mid twenties to where I'm at right now. You know, and like uh, my mindset has changed a lot. Um, I've been through a lot of things, a lot of different um, situations that have brought me to this, to give me my out. Um, so don't be married to, to a, a, a job. Like if you're at that shop, you're miserable. You know, be on the lookout for something else. Like there's no, it's not wrong to be um, looking into a different. Uh, here we go. 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 Yeah. So we didn't think that out. So my bad. Um, but, you know, it's it's not against, you know, the rules to be looking for a, a better situation. Um, now, here, there's the one thing I do um, want to say is that, like, just because you know, you don't like it in the beginning. I, you know, give it some time. You know, see, see how you feel about it. See, like, you got to go through a little bit of time to to figure out if it's really something that you want to get out of and, and whatnot. And you know, don't just get into something because you really like it because it's a hobby. You know, because there's been times I'm not gonna lie that like, you know, the grind is real. Even if even though I love what I do and, and I love the industry for the most part, and I love working with kids. Um, there's still some days when I wake up and I get here to grind, you know, and, and if that's going to ruin how you feel about something, you know, don't just get into something because, I, oh, I like, like a big thing, like a lot of people, especially now, like the, our industry is really watered down. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So everybody's like, oh, I'm a personal trainer. Oh, yeah, I got my certification. Yeah. It's like yeah. 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 Right, exactly. Like, like a personal trainer, you know? Um, and, like, and I'm willing to talk, right? I didn't go to school for this, right? Like I didn't, I didn't get my degree in in ECLD or exercise science, right? Yeah, yeah, but you went out of your way to obtain like the highest okay. degree oh. of education you could without, without. Like, school, which most people aren't willing to do. They're like, I'll just go on Instagram. Yeah. Why would I invest in a CSCS and I have to study and pass this right, difficult exactly. exam? Right. right. So like that's the thing. And, and in all honesty, yeah. like I, I'll put my knowledge yeah. up with. People, some people don't have interest in that, right? Yeah. So, like, like I, I brought it upon myself because I'm a nerd. Like, I was like, yo, I'm a, I, and also, like, my big, like, motto is, like, if I'm going to do something, I want to be the best at it. Like, if, why do something if, if like, I'm not trying to be the best dude in business? Yep. You know, yeah. and that goes to that thing for, 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 for real. Like, there's not, I don't have any passions in, in like, because, like, if I'm passionate about something, I'm like, I'm like you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to be as best as I can be in the area. So, like, a big thing with the industry now is like, oh, everybody can do this, right? Everybody's like, I got my, I don't even know, some terrible, like, I went to a, a class this day and I got a certification, like, cool. Um, but my thing is, like, just because it's their hobby, oh, just because they lift weights or just because they look good, they're going to be a, a personal trainer or something. And like that's not a great thing, you know. Let's, let's try to make sure that we have a 
baseline knowledge and uh, a desire to be really good. So if you're going to make into something in business, um, you have to, there's got to be a fire because there's a lot of times that I didn't keep going because everything seemed to just be crashing in front of me. Like like oh when this place fell you know through like oh man I never saw something at those instances like I would say it's like I really, if people around me knew that like they could start like down that like um like I really started to get like it's like yeah, like the center of the place through and if I didn't have this this fire to you know provide this for my people and and like to be at a level where I wasn't, you know, because I, I was hitting the ceiling at where I was, and that's not good enough for me, right? So if I didn't have this fire to just just, just be better, then it would never work out. So if you wanted to like, uh, like start a cookie business or something, and because you like eating cookies, um, like baking cookies, like that's not enough. You have to be like really passionate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if like, if it was, yeah, and I don't know, the first like six months, first year of the business, everybody kept telling me like you're gonna go through some times. And like I had it's not hasn't been like rosy every day. So if you don't have that passion about cookies, you won't get through you're the not gonna, road. Right. You're not gonna be able to push through those days where you're like, Oh man, I just got the Pico bill, you know, mm-hmm. my up mm-hmm. it's like really <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So like who the oatmeal raisins just got a tariff on that and bring them in. That's crazy. <laughs> really taking the analogy <laughs> far. <laughs> you know, so, so, like, if you're not really passionate and you're not willing to go through that to make the best freaking cook you can, you're, it's, you're just not going to make it. You're going to be miserable, like, out of it, you know? So, like, if you're going to go start business, you know, get your, get your ducks in a line, but also have a passion for it and, and a fire. That's going to push you through the marathon. You know, I think it's great that you do have that passion. You seek out being the best that you can be, and you can be the best in the industry. And like, uh, we super watered down. But uh, a benefit of being someone like who's chasing out the, the best, trying to have the most knowledge possible, is that if you're kind of a well informed person, hopefully seeking out uh, good information, they can sift through all that BS yeah, yeah, yeah. and find you, which can help separate you from. Oh, that's trash. Yeah, hopefully. That's, I mean, that's one thing I have to approve on, though, is uh, is putting content out there. Because I'm like a like I'm not a big social media guy, um, like at all, really. Um, and, and I know that that's how it works nowadays. So that's how like that's how kids get information. That's how like people find out about things. Yeah. Um, so I, I have to do a better job of that so that people can see that. For sure. Yeah, it's, uh-huh. it, it's difficult, especially nowadays. Like, that's a critical part of any business. But even like you uh, previously referred to, but still, at the end of the day, if you uh, are good at what you do, you have a good product, uh, at least by word of mouth, there's going to be improvements. So if you make kids better and it translates to the field, like, yeah, for at sure. the end of the day, you're going to have some sort of success if you put in the work to be really good at what you do and then that translates to who you're working with. Like, yeah, for sure. So, like, actually, that's all I've done, really. So, like, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I've been really blessed with, uh, like, really good kids. Just, like, not even as actors, but as good kids, as in, like, personalities and just, like, respectful. Um, and they're willing to come in and, and put work and stuff. So that's, like, been huge. Um, but also, like, really good parents. So, you know, like, that's a big thing for me. And, and, and I think they see that I care. They see that, you know, they come in here and say, oh, it's different from this place or that place. Um, and they tell people. So, like, I haven't even really done any social media per se. Um, definitely not consistent social media. Mm-hmm. But, like, I've still grown in the first five months because of the word of mouth stuff. And that's, that's actually still the, the will always be, I don't care, social media, but <laughs> um, that will always be the best marketing tool mm-hmm. is word of mouth. Um, because once one parent, you know, kind of co signs me, like, that's good. That already builds a little bit of trust. Oh, I heard this so and so's mom talk about how, you know, her daughter did so well in your programs or whatever. And then and that right in that buys a little trust. And that will always be better than any, you know, ad on Facebook, ad on Instagram, T V commercial. Um, because it's from a reliable so way that they know. So um, yeah, so I've been I've been lucky to have people that are willing to go to bat and 
talking up, which is awesome. Um, um, but yeah, I got to go. I got to go put content out there so that people that don't know me you know, or it, you know, somehow directly um, around me can see too. Because I mean, that's just how the world is. Yeah, but uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of BS. Yeah, a lot of BS. For sure. For sure. All right, you want to move into uh, part two? Part two. Sure, sure, sure. All right, so more of more more science and history stuff. Uh, now we got the background on Mel. Some good information. So talking about kind of the basic principles of training athletes. Um, what fitness traits are you most concerned with developing in your athletes, and how is this going to affect your program design? How about you structure things, and how is it different from training your programs like regular people that are still to be more health and overall? Yeah. Uh, Really good question. And so, like, this is where, like, it, um, this is, like, the differentiation, right? So, this is what kind of where, like, like, we kind of split off to, like, what I do and what you guys do. Yeah. Um, so, very, very simply for, like, you know, Cole and I, you could right. say at this point that we're, like, invested in bodybuilding training. For sure. Um, I've competed in powerlifting. I work with powerlifters. And when we're looking at these two specific endeavors, like, it's very, very simple. Uh, when it comes to, like, powerlifting, we have, like, maximal strength. So, like, a one RM and three lifts. Uh, so, we have, like, the technical uh, slash, like, neurological demands of those. And then when those kind of, like, run out, and it's just about, like, accumulating more muscle mass to increase maximal strength. And then we have hypertrophy. It's literally just getting as jacked as possible. So, yeah, which is just by, like, accumulating sufficient volume, like, an amount of work. Through like this. so like we literally have two traits in, in yeah, the yeah. field that Cole and I are oh, yeah. so it's pretty, it's pretty simple and and you can get into how real athletes real athletes, athletes is much different. Yeah, so this is why kind of yeah, so like, um, like, like, like I was talking, talking about how like it's kind of watered down. Um, and like when personal trainers get this like sweet three A certificate at like a workshop. At like high school, school. Um, <laughs> like, and it's, cool. it's cool. Like, and I'm glad that they're like going out and doing it. But like, that doesn't mean you can come out and train just anybody. You know, it might mean you can train yourself. But like, there's a lot more. And I'm not trying to diminish what you guys do, or or like, or what the, the regular personal trainer does. I'm not, I'm not trying to do that. There's like more variables in an app because, yeah, for sure. because there's like specific demands, like you were saying, there's specific things that you have to worry about. Um, and there's like a high variable like sequence that goes into it to where it like, you know, check off the box. Um, so first, first and foremost, everybody that comes in here gets an assessment, um, like a head to toe assessment in terms of like um, range of motion. Um, height, weight, you know, capacities in terms of uh, where they're at physically, fitness capacity, movement capacity, um, because all that goes into like an algorithm um, to where, you know, we build the, I don't want to say perfect program, there's no perfect program, but like program the best that the person's needs. Mm -hmm. um, so like there, there's a lot of variables that get into it. One of the biggest variables is age. Um, not just chronological age in terms of like all like fifteen, uh, but training age. And what I mean by that, training age is like how long, how, how much history of training do you have? Right. right? So, so like, like how many years, how many months, how many whatever of training do you have on your belt? So like a lot of the, I mean Mike knows a lot of the 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 clients in here. Yeah, yeah. a lot of the apps um, they come in, in here are on the younger side. So like I have a lot of like. Seventh and eighth, and I'm not going to train those guys like I'm going to train a senior in high school, you know, um, that's been trained for, me for like three or four. I mean, that's uh, that is, I know now, right? That's like kind of like uh, negligent, right. so and, and I, I think that's a big issue, it's like these Instagram videos, and you see these, um. Uh, like you go to gyms and see these like 15 year old kids like one that packs it in or we're doing these three like four drills platters and sand with like a vest on so, you know what I mean like, yeah, yeah. Where, like they do it for the grand you know it's that kind of stuff when, 
But that is not what those kids need. Mm-hmm. You know, there is there is zero base of, of physical, like a, no foundation mm-hmm. to, to those kids. You know, so so I you have to handle that thing. So, uh, but in, in 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 everything, you know, the biggest thing for me is movement quality. All right, so not to be as important for the body thing about. Um, because we just operate in one plane. Yeah, all yeah, the time. Sagittal plane robots. Yeah, Sagittal plane robots. Yeah, so how much are, movement quality can there possibly yeah, exactly. be? <laughs> so, so that's a key thing. So movement quality is really big. So when we assess, um, here we put them through different movement assessments. How they are in split pains in terms of like on, on one knee. How they, you know, can they get a, a, a squat pattern correctly? Um, I don't throw like a barbell on these kids right away. Because at that age, it's not about chasing the trophy. You know, we're not, it's not mm-hmm. a, like a hypertrophy is not my main goal for kids. Um, and it's not really my main goal for most of my right. really years. Yeah. Um, that it depends on sport, depends on position and specific demands. But like my, my biggest thing with, especially the 13 year olds and the kids that, you know, even 16 year olds that have training is, the neurological, the neuromuscular gains, right? So, like, getting getting correct movement patterns in and just, like, rewire the brain so that they move correctly. Mm-hmm. You know, so I might not have uh, a kid with a barbell on his back for a year, you know, because it's just not worth it. It's right. something not clicking in terms of, you know, their, their pattern. Um, so movement quality is first and foremost. And then it, and then it goes to... Um, you know, the specific sport. So I train a lot of baseball guys. I'd probably say right now, 5% of my guys where girls are baseball, softball player. Um, and they're really good, right? So they're, they're a very quirky group that needs a lot of specific design. Um, but I think a lot of people get like too into like specificity. Yeah, specificity. Uh, uh, and I think they treat like every athlete like unicorns when there really is so much overlap in sports. Mm-hmm. You know, so like, and then that's what I, I noticed I started becoming when I became like, a strength and condition coach. Like, I started watching sports differently and I started seeing like movements instead of just like dudes don't play basketball and, you know, stuff like that. Um, and so there's so many. Overlapping qualities in in um, in these, these sports, and, and so, so like you might see a baseball player in here, and then you might see, I don't know like a or you might see a you know, hockey player, and the thirteen year old baseball player might be doing the same thing at a regressed level though, like not loaded, stuff. but they might doing they might be working on the same type of movement pattern as the sixteen year old hockey player. You know, um, and people will, will be like, oh, you know, it's sports specific. I hate that. It's just not, it's not, not sports. sports. No, there's no such thing as sports specific. If somebody like pushes that as a brand, that like uh, immediately like sends alarms off my head because I'm like, I'm going to witness like a dude in the gym swinging it back with like a band attached to it <laughs> and, and, and stuff like that. And that's like, like, but the crazy thing is, like, I've seen that, though. And they're like, oh, yeah, we're sports-specific here. And so, like, when people ask me, like, oh, are you sports-specific? I'm like, eh, nah, dude, like, I'm not. Like, it, because you're not going to see that kind of stuff in here because that, that doesn't translate, you know. So the, the best way to transfer from the gym to the, to the field is, is really good movement quality, hammer home that stuff, so that when they do get old enough, you know, and they start in the, the hormones going throughout the body, and they go through the, and they can start actually putting on size and muscle. Like they're moving well, mm-hmm. you know, they're moving well, which is awesome. And you don't have to worry about it. it's already in their in their brain, and it's become second nature. And you can load it, and then they're gonna have a lot easier time uh, performing that in here, and also gonna be able to perform it on the. Right. Um, so a big thing for me is, is to let kids know, um, hey, like this is a that you see like 
sit in it in the basement and let it go. You know, right there. There's a hip hinge. This is why we do we do. You know, so I mean that's big. Um and then, and then there's like, like the, the the energy systems, the domain. So obviously I'm not gonna train like my big thing is since I'm a baseball guy, I didn't fight the fight. Uh, I really haven't. Um the energy system we still like baseball's so bad in terms of like being grandfathered. Like like the coaches are so dead central, like running long distance still. And like, oh my I, God, like I, can't, I can't I can't even tell you like how many conversations I still have. And they're like, oh, I gotta flush lactic acid out. Do that. What are you talking about? That's not the science. science. I, I brought I brought this up to you before, right? Like yeah. some kid told me this. I was like, there's no way it's correct, but I'm not gonna like this isn't my lane, right? Like right. strength yeah. and conditioning for baseball. He was a pitcher who said that. Gosh, mm-hmm. it was a pitcher who said that um, he ran long distances mm-hmm. and did like all this conditioning mm-hmm. to get the lactic acid out of his throwing arm. We don't know what that is. Even just like on a very like, who is giving this information? Who? Where does this come from? Like you, know? you don't have to be like highly educated. Like does that make any sense no at sense. all? No just sense. Logically, at the ground level, no. no, no I feel no like sense. even as a middle school or a high school, you're just still so impressionable. That, that, that's the problem, right? Yeah. So that's so that's a reason why I'm doing what I'm doing because I want to get these kids in early, right? To not like brainwash them. I don't want to brainwash them. I want to like. So my big thing in here is I want to. I'm still a teacher, and mm-hmm. like. I'm still a coach. I want to teach these kids so that when they get out to their high school and their college and they go, into pro- they just crush it for one, but two, they can also think critically. Like this is making me do this. Mm-hmm. But I remember Melly was talking about how whatever, and they're showing me, like I'm, I'm providing proof, right? Like I'm not just saying, oh, this is how we do it here. here. <laughs> like, yeah, there, there, there has to be some basis to what I'm saying. Some basis. Why am I still running long distance? Right, right. 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 acid, first of all, coaches, that's that's lactic acid. Acid. It, it doesn't cause the sores in the arm. It causes the sores in the arm. In fact, you just threw a one on the pitch. That's what causes the sores in the arm. And no, like that is dead, okay? There's zero scientific evidence to lactic acid. Making sores. It's actually the opposite. Uh, so, like, I don't know, what is that, like 1999? Like, 99. Like, yeah, like, yeah. Like, like, these coaches are stuck in the early 90s, late 80s, and they and can't change their mind. Yeah, they're people that have just probably stopped like learning and like seeking out new they information. They haven't started learning or seeking out new information. They didn't start. Yeah, this, this is, is what, what they were just, this, this is, is what they did, so they're doing it. And the big thing is, why didn't get doing this? That doesn't mean anything. Anything. So you still have kids out here running long distance, and so like that goes to the energy demands. Like uh, she says, Man, I'm not going to take these baseball players the most. And you guys are looking weird, but the most violent sport there is, right? And I don't like the you know, Miles Garrett violence. Like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, dude, too soon, my bad. I'm, like, uh, I'm not. I'm not talking about like like UFC violent and like con uh, like combat sports. What I'm talking about is the movement of throwing a baseball is the most violent thing. You know, it happens so fast, so explosively. Why am I trying to train, like, the aerobic system to the point where, like, I'm running its poles, which is right right foul pole to left foul pole back, like, 16. I had 16 of them in college. Like, I don't know how many miles that is. It's probably 26.2 miles. Guys. <laughs> you know? So, like, there's no way that, that that's not making me a better baseball player. It's not making my body better. It's not relieving this. I actually probably sore after that. And then, I wasn't even. So, like, training the right energy system um, in terms of, like, aerobic, anaerobic, all that stuff. Um, knowing the sports demands. Baseball is a rotational sport. So, I have to... To, to get some, some carryover, um, I had to train in three planes every hour, you know. Um, and I'm just, so I'm not lifting it like a telephone booth. Like, I'm not going to be in one plane. I'm not doing, you know, I'm not going to be able to just stand in one spot and do all my, my workout, right? So we're going to be moving. Uh, but we also have to make sure that they're capable of moving in those different planes. So we have to build up to If not, you know, we're not you know, proficient and I'm going to have quality. So um, that's part of it too. Uh, 
and then you know, A two, and then in season, out of season, that plays into it. You know, so there's we're gonna train differently if if like you're in the middle of the, the summer season for baseball, you're not gonna train the same as you would in the off season. There's things that we try to avoid. There's things that we're gonna have our home for. Obviously, the workouts are gonna be shorter in duration, so be fresh. Um, so they think they um, still had a very large population in the field. Like with their main goal is to have kids like throw up in their workouts, like like needing a wheelchair to get out, uh, like each day because they're so beat up. And that has been like, embedded into the brains of people, you know. And that's one of the biggest things I have to fight is the fact that the goal after a workout is not go like you're dead, you know. Um, your goal is like um, my at least to feel, feel like pretty fresh, especially in season. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, all season, I'm gonna try to drive a little mm-hmm. bit and stress them a little bit. That meditation, um, but like, I still don't want you to walk out of here every day, like, like crawling. Out. Like, I don't want to feel dead. But it's so that is so widely accepted that that people think that in order to work out and have to work out, you need to feel like crap, you need to feel like beat up, worn down, like you need to like be nauseous. And I was just gonna bring that up actually because I feel like. Let me know if it's not what it is, but say for like a coach, uh, if you throw like specific training on top of the normal uh, practice thing and what they do in practice, the coach just thinks that these players have limited capacity to recover and adapt to the training. Yeah. To understand the body's like a fine right. So that's like a big, like my big, one of my big challenges is, is like dealing with um, the amount they play, the amount these kids play, uh, the amount they throw, the amount they jump, the amount. Like, because these seals coach, and it's big now, right? Like, the big thing is load management right now. In sports, that's like a big thing. You know, like Kawhi Leonard, the only play 60 games. Like, like Little League World Series, like, these right. kids come to pitch so many pitches. Right. So, like, that's good. And then, and so my big thing is, um, I'm trying to educate coaches too, right? So, I'm trying to, what I'm trying to do right now is I'm developing a coach seminar here, um, where, like, the Sunday afternoon, a couple hours, and you know, we just go through science and break it down in the latest terms and try to educate coaches on, hey, this is this is really important. Because I don't know if you know, I know you guys are the nigger, especially in this role, but um, the number one age group for Tommy John surgeries in, in America is 16 to 19. That's like 56% of the surgeries, something like that. Don't go in there, somewhere around it. Is 16 year olds to 19. So right there, and you would, when I read that, it blew my mind, because all you hear about is these, these pros, you know? Mm-hmm. 16 to 19, that's a, that's like a junior in college to like a freshman sophomore, or junior in high school, I'm sorry, to like freshman or sophomore college. Yeah. That's crazy, yeah. and that shows a huge problem, huge problem in what we're doing um, at the young age. So go to back to you, like these folks just think, oh, they're young, Bounce back. They don't get tired. Nah, dude. They get tired just like the regular human being. They're not, yeah. they're not like these like, incredible beings, mm-hmm. you know. And if they don't, they, they don't, they just don't show it usually because they're kids and they don't. Uh, I just don't. It, it's just not what they did, you know. Mm-hmm. They just oh, I'm just gonna play. And also, like you said, they're impressionable, right? So like, I can't let the coach see me do this. Oh, coach wants me to do this. I have to do it mm-hmm. because they try they're trying to go on the field or the court. Yeah, exactly. So. My big thing right now is is trying to get a communication between their coaches and myself so that they know, hey, this is what they're doing. This is how much they're doing. And like let me curtail, alter what we're doing. Like the amount of rows or the amount of practices with the length of practices. You know? Um, and and I Honestly, I have not got good feet. Like, I, it's hard. You know, I can't even um, bring stuff up like this to some coaches because they don't want to hear. They're just so set in their ways. Yeah. yeah. So it's, and, and it's big ego issue. Mm-hmm. You know, everybody's got to go athletes, exact athletes. It's, it's ego, athletes, kind of. Mantra. So, like, 
we got to put that aside. It's not about us. It's not about me. It's not about the coach. It's not about it's about the kid. And if you're not in it for that, then you got to find a different profession because it's just yeah, it's just not the way it is. So like, we we have to do a better job of like um, finding a limit on how much they they do out of the gym and also like out of like at the, the practice, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so that's that's huge because. It's really big on baseball too because they like I don't know if you've seen like bands, right? Like doing like the Mexican bands and uh, yeah. So like the idea, that the intention is good, right? The coaches are like, oh, do bands, it'll strengthen the rotator cuff. And I was like, yeah, what makes up the rotator cuff? Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, so they're like, so the intention is good, usually, but like they and, and like a big thing is they it, so like my technology. Um, like I was, Eric Cressy is like my like, god of what we do. Like, he's the man. Um, I suggest anybody who listens to this, like, check him out. Um, athlete or not, he's just really awesome. Um, but he was like, it, 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 it's that for with like, like an athlete's cup, and uh, and you fill it with water. So, you keep on just adding things on, and it's like filling a cup that's already full with water and put more water in. So it's an overflow. So like that's like a big deal. So if like you're rolling baseball like you can rotate your cup. You're coming in here training um, and then you add on bands or add on whatever um, just throwing more into the cup that's already full. You know what I'm saying? So like there's nothing good that's gonna come of that. You're just gonna be grinding that kid down. And that's just how we So what we really have to do is like if we're gonna throw something new at them, we have to take something out. You know, so that's like a, a big deal. We have to we have to somehow, somehow educate. Like that's, that's like one of my things right now. It's like so I don't think you get out or have the coach come in and do like an educational thing. Um, so that's super important because the the like like the kid like a teenager nine nine percent do whatever 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 coach says yeah, yeah. because. They know that that coach is in charge of how much that kid plays, how much that kid recruited, how much that kid you know, sits on the bench, it's miserable. So, and like, I respect the kid, but I can't get any kid. I don't, because the kid doesn't know enough. And, and the kid, I mean, I wasn't that kid. You won't be wrong, set in a row, but I got a little bit. So, like, I can't get that kid because he's just trying to play. And, and she's just trying to get on the field. So, like, I would do the same thing. Even if it's detriment of, of me, you know. So we yeah. got to do for sure. As a quick, as a quick aside to that, on relate well, on, on these related notes of uh, fatigue management, and then also just like these coaches being stuck in their ways and like not understanding the goal of what they're doing. Like even in hypertrophy, where if there was anything where part of the adaptation process relied heavily on like accumulating fatigue. Even in hypertrophy, we know that accumulating too much fatigue is bad. Right. So, like, look at, like, the recent DeMoss papers, which basically showed if you mess yourself up too bad after a workout, like, like all of your recovery capacity will go toward basically getting back to baseline right. rather than actually, like, growing and getting better. Yeah, that's, right. that's in hypertrophy compared to, like, sport, where the whole point of practice is to get better at a specific skill, right? Mm -hmm. So even, like, in that case, especially, if you're too fatigued, you literally can't get better at your skill. Like, sure. you're incapable of that. And then, on another note, uh, with coaches being stuck in their ways, so I think we touched on this in the first podcast, so I interned at the University of Maryland with their football team. Prime example of coaches being stuck in their ways and the potential repercussions that can happen from this, the summer before I went down there, a offensive lineman died because the coaches who... Uh, apparently aren't actually concerned with making their players better. They're more concerned about, I've been doing this for X amount of sure. years, and this is what we do. They had an offensive lineman continuously run 100-yard sprints. Back in, in, like, 100-degree weather. In 100-degree weather, and the kid died. And it's like, let's, let's look at what we're doing rather than stroking our ego and making people suffering for the sake of it. Why would a lineman need to do that? Right. Like, how can it make possible sense running continuous 100-yard sprint at, like, 300-plus pounds, where, like, you have an intermittent sport where you barely 
play to play and then get 30 seconds of rest. How can continuous 100 yard sprints make any sense in making that player better? Yeah, for sure. And like I just said, these coaches are just stuck in their ways, not actually thinking, are these activities making this player better? How is this specifically benefiting what they do? It doesn't even cross their mind. It, it's, um, it's funny that you bring that up. Not that that one is sad. Uh, but the point before that, um, about like the fatigue, right? Mm-hmm. So the load management thing is a big deal. I uh, was on Instagram, I know, social media, <laughs> and uh, I actually got into a Instagram debate. Oh, boy. Oh. Yeah. Instagram debate, yeah. He a little quarrel. So, so, yeah. What's a quarrel? I, 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 I didn't know we were having the uh, the roast this yeah. week. Yeah. <laughs> so, here's the thing, like, um, go tree. Like, uh, I'm, I mean, I'm, I am no, no, no cusses, no, no, like, uh, this is, I was very respectful because I don't believe in that. I'm very not confrontational. I was just trying to enlighten and, and just kind of like, you know, one person at a time, if I can enlighten that person. You know? So uh, a guy that I follow, that I'm, you know, he's an also in the industry, uh, and, and, stuff, and, and we build a relationship with him. Jim Paris, good, good dude, great dude, he's the six or seven, he's a district coach. Um, he, he posts something, uh, and I kind of break every time we're really counting on things. Um, because it's just like, you know, why don't you see? But, um, like, he composed something about, like, um, load management, it, it shouldn't be, like, like a, a problem for a specific person. It's like an NBA problem. Like, it's a cultural problem. It's like, um, do we have to look at from the, we have to take a step back and see why. why. And, and, like, I don't know. You guys are, like, you guys aren't into it as much as me, right? So, like, the big thing is, like, skills coaches. Yeah. And I'm not trying to talk, like, they're on skills coaches. I am a skills coach for baseball, right? So, I, I, I think there's a need for skills coaches, right? But these yeah. NBA dudes, baseball skills coaches, are doing, like, three days, guys. Right? They're, like, I'm talking, like, like you, you see Instagram videos, like, the latest, like, trap song on it, like, in the back, and, like, these, like, J-O films, like, J-O films, like, awesome. <laughs> and J-O films. Um, like, you, you see that, and it's just, like, these guys doing, like, Skills work for like jazz, 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 jazz for like hours in a gym, like in 90 degree weather, like three times a day. And and um, there's like literally the NBA guy talking about like how he does two sessions a day. Dude, you're in the NBA, like I don't need two sessions a day. Like I get skills are important, but like playing eight games a year, you're still training. Your your schedule is not. You're like flying from this place to that place. And it's like a big ESPN article came out about how they don't get to sleep NBA guys because of the schedule. And and he's doing skills like twice a day for two hours. And and these skills coaches don't always contact and communicate with the, the team. Right? So that's the big issue. The teams and their strength coaches and their like, you know, athletic development people don't know that these guys are putting in two to three extra hours of work. You know, and so they don't know how what the capacity, what the limit is, and these guys, no one, these guys are getting injured, wearing down. You know, so like this guy came on and commented, and he basically like um, Jim Ferris and was like, you know, how do you say it's not the skills coaches' fault? It's you know they're doing everything they can to get better. The the skills coaches aren't at fault. They should be getting thanked because they're the ones getting them to the league. Right, so he said, those coaches are the reason why these players are in the NBA. And I think it was a really respectful. I was like, I don't think he's, like, the point wasn't, like, these skills coaches are bad. Or they're, like, they're not they're needed. But, like, yeah, the point is, we have to do a better job of communicating. Like, we have to, like, all get on, especially with these these NBA guys. That shit is boggles my mind they're not. But, like, I my, my point was, like, these types of skills, that's the way they're down. Because if we're not doing it now in these high school and colleges, then we're just screwing them up for if they are like, you know, if they froze or are, they're going to be like not messed up, but they're, they're going to have issues, you know, and it's that overuse over time. So I was, that was my point. I was like, dude, like, we just need to communicate. And he was going, I know, like, so you're saying that like, uh, you shouldn't work hard, like, these guys shouldn't put in these sessions. And he used, this is like, things like, you know, like, I just, you know, it's like, uh, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. He's like, so you're saying that I shouldn't have an all out ass when they train to work out? And I was like, yo, you're just hitting me with 
I hate cliches. And I was like, <laughs> and I was like, no, man, I appreciate work ethic. Like, work, like I want a good work ethic. And like, that's what you value a player. But like, it's up to us to be say, hey, let's pull back. Like, you can't go all out all the time. And that's the big thing. Like, that's with my training is, you can't go all out all the time. You're gonna wait around. You're gonna get hurt. The, the feet that's in. That's why I dropped a, a study that I just read like two days before. Uh, I forget the name of it. Yeah, I'm sorry. But it was talking about how um, they said fatigue and the ability to uh, acquire a new skill. So, like, the, they broke it into two groups, um, fatigue one and the other. And the, the results were, like, astonishing. Like, the people that aren't fatigued acquired the skill at, like, double the rate. Mm-hmm. And they retain that skill at double the rate. Um, and then the people that were Skills. And so the people that were fatigued were slower to pick the skill up and slower to like hammer them in the ring. So my big thing was, hey, sports are a skill, right? You shooting and jump shots is a skill. If I'm growing, like, we're going all out all the time. Study, and this is a new science. Studies show that fatigue is detrimental to short term and long term acquisition skill. So like why like the all out attitude all the time and what doesn't kill you make you stronger attitude is oh it's so bad it's not there's there's no room for it. do you know what I mean because what doesn't kill you could make you not as good performance wise <laughs> it might not kill you like yeah but like you're probably not gonna get stronger you know it's, it's not, not stronger you know it's, it's not it's kind of like you will get lost. And it's like, yes, you will, because yes, you will die will. 10 years earlier than I will. Like, so, like, that's, like, I can't really talk about that. Sleep one. Sorry. But, yeah. No, but, like, exactly. It's just, like, just because it hurts so that we're going to watch these cliches. And, like, we admire, I mean, we put athletes on the pedestal as a society. And even in the industry, I'm usually, like, people look at me like, dude, like, we made way too big of a deal. It's awesome. I love it. it. Yeah, it's, it's cool. cool. And we need it inside. Yeah, definitely. For, for sure. sure. But, but like, we sometimes put like, that in with like people like eating each other up over this. Yeah, yeah that's stupid. That's like, that's taking these dudes like heroes and like, because they like, like work out the deal. And, and like, the, you know what I mean? Like, that's cool. Like, like, it's cool. But like, it's cool. But like, yeah, let's, 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 our value system a little bit there. But like, just because we see cool videos and grinding hard. And in the gym, gym and, and, and the other shots, shots yeah, doesn't, doesn't mean that's, that's like making them better. I, 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 I feel, feel like especially with those guys, if they, they did quality over quantity, so much better. Out. It's kind of just like how our country is as a whole, and it's like, well, more is more, and right. it's just like so, the yeah. more. Like, pick, pick yourself, yourself up by your straps, yeah, and, like, the there. more hard work you do, you, like, miss yeah. out on sleep, spend, spend more time doing, doing this, like, like, you will obviously get better, and it's just, like, like there's, like, there's just no concept how, well, like, like maybe, maybe if I was sleeping more or taking brief periods to relax, that the quality would For be sure. better, so it would actually be making uh, more adaptations in a shorter period of time. Sure. I mean, it can literally apply to everything, and... I'll continue to be selfish and try to uh, relate these concepts to hypertrophy. Uh, maximum recovery volume, and like it's just a general concept that can that can apply to everything. Like we know that we know that for getting jacked. Like it's just like okay, well, more volume uh, tends to correlate with more growth. Like shows the mission return. But like we all know that that doesn't mean you just jump up to thirty to forty sets for muscle group because if you don't have the capacity to. However, you will find out your lifts will get worse. You'll be feeling worse. But everyone kind of has the most amount of volume they can recover from benefit from right, for right. hypertrophy. Um, but this this directly applies to just any field, like any sport. Like there's only so much you can recover from depending on your genetics, uh, what you're doing outside of the gym, sure. and it's not, it's not more or it's like. The right amount of more. Yeah, it's, and so, like, yeah. this, exactly. This, this, this dude came back with the, um, you know, you can't like every player's different. Like you can't tell this guy to like stop if he's a, you know, like he's going all out. I was like, dude, I never said that this applies. Like every like one thing applies to everybody. I was like, that's why I said my big point was we need to be communicating and we need to track everything. Like so that's a big thing for me here with with my my athletes. Like I try to track everything. So I have a lot of them. 
work with with Mike uh, nutritional wise because that's the so like track that with all that stuff. Um, and and like, but I also I don't like how many hours do you eat yet before you you train? Did this 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 this? What is school? And I I always ask like I always get questions to build relationships with the athletes, but also like I also try. Um, information out of them that they might not be able to, like how school like what's, what's your what's your schedule like in school because I need to put those outside stress so because that's the thing if I'm trying to track my school and like in the, in the Instagram argument um, my big thing was like you need to track or you need to track sleep uh, like hydration uh, food intake we need to, like stressors like you know did you have something that happened at school or or, or at work something like that because all that stuff goes into performance. That stress is stress. Stress is stress, right? Yeah. So, like, no matter what it is, it's going to have an effect on you, especially in terms of the skill acquisition and its performance. So, like, we need to track all that. So, that's, that's one thing that I like over here. I track as much as I can. And, and anything that's on data, I, I try to track. Um, and that's my thing. It's like, right, some people have a, like, a longer, like, leash in terms of, like, mm -hmm. effort and, and, Go all out, and and I agree with them on that. So I'm not going to look at one player blindly. That's why we're tracking, you mm -hmm. know, because if I'm tracking and I'm taking note of everything they're doing, I'm going to find out the point of finishing return, right? Because hey, man, after you only got six hours of sleep here on this day, and look at your performance in the next two days, or, or something like that, like, like you only need this much. So uh, by doing that, you get a better understanding of when to pull back and when to push. But like, yeah, so there's times that you're where you have to push a little bit more. You know, there's times here in top of the month or whatever, that like, hey man, I gotta pull back a little bit because it's exam time. It's mine. Like you guys then like those weeks suck. So like I might have to pull back because I'm not getting sleep. I'm not I'm not eating enough. I've had seven billion milligrams of caffeine and an ounce of water. You know what I mean? There's all those things. Right? So like and that was my like, I'm not saying this, but like, there's a point where shooting all these jump shots or taking all these things is detrimental. Yeah. And there's a diminishing returns. Why keep going at it? You know, you're just going to probably start a flaw or something at the end. Um, and so, like, that's the thing we need to distract and be as, as like, sure as we can so that we can make the best call. Because in the end, uh, I'm just like a stress actor. You know, that's, that's basically what I am. What do you mean? Like, like I, I manage stuff. So like I manage the kind of stress I put on the athlete and also I have to manage uh they're doing outside. I can't control that, but I can manage what I can do to them mm -hmm. so that it doesn't just end up being you know. So but that's a big that's a big thing. It's like yeah, manage at the manage below. We have to both manage. Mm -hmm. Like and now there's like a really bad conversation with it. I get it. Because these guys are making millions of dollars and only playing 60 games. But yes. also, like, all right, let's load manage all year round. Mm -hmm. Even in the off season and stuff mm -hmm. so that they can get in and, you know, provide their service, I guess. But then it goes back to kids. So I got kids playing 140 baseball games in the season. That's 15. 15. And I, I had a whole day. Like, like, you know that you know that major leaguer. Like, this is what they this is what they get like millions of dollars. And they're playing 162 games. And most of them don't play like, every game. You know, right? like, they get their days off. They're playing 140 games. And your kid played 100 games as a 14 year old, dude. That's insane. Insane. Alright. We have we have two more questions for you. Alright, two more. So uh, Based on, so we kind of have like this general model set up uh, for, for training athletes. What's for these uh, boxes we have to take? I want to be a little more specific in the program design for athletes right now, and let's even say even more nuanced, specifically for baseball. So uh, baseball athletes compared to other athletes, what are some cornerstone exercises in most uh, athlete? Programs which you do not utilize for baseball players. That, nice, I like it. Um, so I just wanted to start by saying, with my little preface here, there's no no exercises inherently bad, right? I think like uh, 
like everything today is like you're on one side or the other. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's that the service to do everyone and also just like the field, right? Like nothing is inherently bad. Like like right. I'm sure you like carbs are not inherently bad, even though they are villainized like crazy. You know, all the carbs are wild grow in this belly and <laughs> nope. <laughs> Just no. Like no, that's. No, no, no. I, got, I actually got that this morning. That's why I brought it up. Um, it was like, oh, carbs are why I have this. And I was like, dude, what are you even saying in a situation? Just a sidebar. Like yeah. that happens all the time. Just, <laughs> uh, and it's just like you know in your head that like you like, just, just want to be like, like, yeah, you just want to be like, dude, you're an idiot. Like, I yeah. still sometimes have, like worth it. Like I don't know. Like, I still have no think? idea how to deal with these issues. Yeah. To be yeah, completely yeah. honest, like I mean, it's one thing if I'm sitting down having a consultation with someone, then like. We will weed these things out in education, but like, man, like just in past and people being like, yeah, like, you know, the card, like I'm fat now because of it. And it's just like statement, statement, not like, is it because of the card? Yeah, you're just telling me. And I'm just like, you're completely wrong, but like, I, okay. Yeah, yeah. You're right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. I, I don't want to get into this right now. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, you, like, because like, it's, it's hard because it's very much. It's like, yeah, it's literally. like the, the whole like long distance running for baseball it's just like been in our brains and like that's what people push and i just want to be like is it the like is it the carbs dude is it no it's what else do you have yeah it's all all of that yeah um yeah but they're like you can't it's hard and it's really hard to where they need to be at to get the point mm-hmm. uh but so like there's no overall bad bad exercise. Exercise. But, but what I say, what I say, is, say is that like, for populations, for certain, certain type of people, um, there are exercises that I try to avoid. You know okay. what I'm saying? So, for instance, for baseball guys, um, if anybody's ever watched a game uh, or anything, throwing is involved. Okay. So, throwing is this like if you have a bad shoulder or you can't throw, you're just not going to be a baseball player um, anymore. So, the goal is to have the healthy shoulders you can. Um, so I tend to stay away from a certain section of exercises that are wide deep love to worry about your population. <laughs> so um, for like 99.99% of guys, I don't bench. Um, no more belt bench um, for, for baseball population. Uh, uh, no, there's no population no population. Um, oh, I just, I'm um, also, I just, I'm also a team man for sure. And, 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 and we actually, we actually, I know we talk about this a ton, dude, like for over the years yeah. with your issues with your like staff and stuff. Um, and we've had a bunch of conversations about how I was like, yeah, you, you might stay away from me. You can find no alternatives, you know. Just in general, like, who can do it right? Like, no one can it's, do it's, it like, right. It's a really demanding, yeah. man, you need to have like, Perfect mobility. You need to have perfect like, force strength, and you need to have like just awesome movement. Happens. It's hard, man. Yeah. Yeah. Like if no one yeah. don't yeah. see that yeah. 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 extension, <laughs> like you're not doing it right. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 basically just, turns, like inclined bench. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. In air <laughs> bench. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah, so true. Um, so, so like I, I try to stay away from that. Um, and I'm getting the so with the throwing is we want we, I try to do um, exercises that promote uh, scapular mobility, like moving the scap, which are the shoulder blades, um, in all the intended the movement and stuff. So let's see my hand. Uh, like I, I try to try to avoid um, exercises that will like pin the scap back. So like I don't discuss it you guys are not folks here but like uh the really good bench press is going to be pull back you know, pull them bad boys back get it tight back mm-hmm. stuff like that um and for a lot of the population uh we have very, uh, like the press gaps and stuff or you know we're the over like, upper backs or flat thoracic backs so obviously it depends on the individual but the bench press and where I'm, I'm maintaining that rigid, stiff, trolling back to the scap. It's not contagious um, to to the baseball player. So, like, what it comes down to is, like, I do a risk reward analysis of the exercises um, to program. 
And it's it just the, the risks, um, just that way, rewards. Now, there's the studies out there that show, like, an increase in bench press will increase velocity. But, like, yeah, yeah it's a dude. Like, yeah, you're getting stronger. Yeah. You know, it's like, <laughs> we're nobody doing that. Like, I don't argue that. Like, if you want to do that, that's fine. Um, but my thing is, one, it's a pretty technical lift that gets pushed a lot. Um, two, most of the base, 99% of the baseball players who come in here are in some way having a, not like a, a problem with the text, but it's just not mostly like moving like you want to. And I don't want to exacerbate that by, by making like fix the difference, you know? Yeah. And so, and three, like, I can find an alternative that I can, that I can do. If you get the same, you know, it might be a little bit longer because it's not like the king of all. Um, but that's the, the reward is not enough mm-hmm. to, to like load that, that kid up with, with a, a decent amount of weight on the chest. Um, so that's a big one. Bill's hard for us. I just went over it with really that. Um, I'm looking to get like proper mechanism, and a lot of times we're just going to overcompensate with like a hypersension lower back, you know, the big parts of the lower back or, or something along those lines. I'm not talking about that, you know. Um, another, another thing I, I tend, tend to um, lead with uh, a big part of my baseball population that might surprise some people is back squat. Uh, and that's because you get a little late a little bit with the bar position and mm-hmm. moving the bar. Um, and that's a super important thing for baseball. Right? Mm-hmm. One of the healthy labels. Um, if not, you're going to be, that's like, that's like almost like a death sentence. Like a, like a twin label, a frame. Like most people have like frame of the label and it's asymptomatic, they don't the pain, especially if you're playing. But like, if you do some damage to the labrum, it's, it's like worse than Tommy John. So Tommy John and the, the, and the UC out there to become uh, like way, way more like a common downside. But like a, if you have like a torn label slap tears and stuff, that's it's a much longer harder road to get back to where we were in terms of performance on the field. So like I try to avoid that. I try to avoid that. So I'm a big safety squat bar guy. Um and and front squat. Um so those are my two most common um squat patterns used. Um obviously the goblin squat is awesome. And there's so many that, like, that you can dress things up and make them better. I'm also, if, if like, this, the baseball player's squat pattern, like, like I'm not married to it an exercise, mm-hmm. right? So, like, that's, that's a big thing. I don't think everybody has to fit this squat. And, like, I'm not trying to make power lifters. I'm not, I'm not trying to make, like, really good weight lifters either. Yeah. Like, that's cool. Like, most of my people end up being really good weight lifters just from, like, you know, the, the year's training. But like, that's not my goal. My goal is to drive performance. Yeah, I mean, I told you, you know? about this when I was working with, like, a high school football team over the summer and, like, witnessing them in the weight room. And, like, all of these kids well, – well, for one, like, these coaches set up, like, these 1RMs on, like, power clean spots yeah, and yeah. bench. And already that's just a bad idea. But these kids get so – like, the – the weight on the bar and its importance is so ingrained into yeah. their brain for some reason. They all obsess over it. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, okay, are you guys trying to be really good power lifters right. or are you trying to get better with your translation to the football field? And it gets completely lost and these kids are getting hurt, you know, yeah, just sure. throwing these weights on the bar and their technique is so poor and it's just, yeah. it's not helping them. Do you want to be a good athlete or do you want to be a good power lifter? Absolutely. And that's like, and one thing for football. Right. That's, that's one thing for, for baseball, it's even dumber. Yeah. <laughs> right? So like so like I have to deal with the spectrum of like quality. It's like there's like um like absolute strength and then there's like absolute speed. And we're all like different ends of the spectrum. And baseball is way closer to the speed side. So like baseball would um fall under what's called speed strength. Mm-hmm. You know? So there's a like a range of velocity of movement that you wanna really have around. And so, if I'm doing one rep max on anything, um, it doesn't really. I mean, obviously, there's gonna be some carryover to it. Like, 
yeah, getting stronger is going to make it for sure. But there's a point where it's like, do I need that? That doesn't have to be a one round to get stronger. Right. Is it, <laughs> is it, am I really, do I have to chase that, like, mm-hmm. that, that, oh, that, that number? You number. know, no. because at some point, I have to train for the, the, the demand, the speed track. I have to train to get better at part of the continuum, right? So, if, I, if, if I'm just crushing, like, Hundred percent, ninety-five percent. At some point, I'm not going to get the adaptation that I'm looking for. And it's probably more technical slash neurological your success at that high of a percentage more so than like your general strength. For sure. For sure. So, so like, like, so like I, I rarely do one RMs um, for baseball guys. Like I usually, if I do have to do that to do percentages off, I go like three, maybe five. Um, I won't do it for a younger kid because that's not my concern. Um, and so for, for baseball, I think it's like I'm, I said before, if you look at a baseball player, they're not like normally huge jack, right? They're not like offensive linemen, they're not linebackers, you know, not power forwards, even that they're pretty mean. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like I'm not trying to trade, chase a first beat, mm-hmm. you know? Um, so no, I just, like, like I I've said, said by saying, saying that, so like I'm not <laughs> doing that. Like, I'm, even on the <laughs> like I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not even like trying, I'm not trying, that's like, whatever like gains I have in size comes from like the residuals of getting stronger and just the byproduct. Right, the byproduct. And yeah, it's not like my goal that I want to, like, I need to attain. Um, there's like so many cases in the sport history where like that dude got too big. Like he, his mobility is really important for baseball. Super important. You have to be able to get into positions that normal people don't get into. I'm gonna have to rotate, and like a lot of people in the world can't really rotate. You know, look at him. You know, so like there's like people that can't do that. So we have to drive that. Like, for for some kids, like I might do more mobility type um, work than say your your run of strength work. And now mobility, I can see, need to load mm-hmm. for a lasting impact. That's what mm-hmm. we finally realized. It's just important, you know? So, like, I'm not saying that we're just foam rolling for, like, an hour. <laughs> like, you know, that's, that's not what we do. But the, we, I'm doing exercises that are, like, trying to increase the mobile the mobility in something like fat. And sometimes instead of, like, right now. You know, so, so I, I try to avoid, uh, like, the back squat. Um, so mental deadlift, I'll do that. That's totally based on um, leverages, like size, mobility, things. Um, big thing, yeah, like the trap bar, trap bar, bar like, um, checks off all the boxes. A lot easier to get into and out of, and it still teaches the hinge really well. Um, and then it can still fill the right on the Um, so that's that's, that's like really not really hard. Um, that's like, yes, in my Um, but in baseball, I do a lot of unilateral stuff, just like, like with, with most of my athletes and, and stuff. I do a lot of unilateral work, uh, meaning like arm or one leg at a mm-hmm. time. Um, and obviously core stuff like that. Um, but like, I don't do like punches, I guess. Right. I guess I should say that. Like, <laughs> and, and sit up and stuff. I'll do more, um, core work that focuses on. Like anti uh, lateral flexion or anti extension stuff, so that I can just make sure I stay alive, make sure, sure that, that I can uh, get a disconnect and also be able to transfer power from ground up, stuff, stuff like that. that. Um, stuff like that. Bef- uh, before we move on to the last yeah. question, um, I want to touch on two things real quick because uh, from what I've witnessed being around you, Kind of having an understanding of your general sure. training methods sure. uh you didn't touch on these but i i want to know your you don't overhead press but you do have a bread and butter for for that kind of movement pattern sure. and then second uh briefly touch on overhead pulling okay so you know pull up slap pull downs you know whether you use those there are certain grips that you prefer for sure for, for sure baseball players just touch on those two things real quick sure. uh so uh, overhead pressing. I obviously don't do the military or you know strict 
not strict. But it's strict. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't do that, but I do love the landmark press. Um, and I think that it's, I mean, that's a staple in, in everybody programs. I mean, and honestly, not many people have the mobility for no red press, like your sugar red press. And that's just like, because of like, racing stuff. And then just better now. It's just the way we are, right? Um, so I love your, uh, the, the landmark press, and you can dress that up in so many ways. Like, there's so many different ways that I can vary that. Um, uh, the landmark press really drives what I'm looking for, it drives the optimization of the sky. And that's super, super important for baseball because um, that's like the throwing pattern, right? So, so I want to do that. And it just promotes stability. And like you can, you can do two and you can do one and I usually like the, like the split stance. I love getting, like I said, I don't run, like, like the challenging the core. Um, so like the stability of the core, like owning your body um, and, and the, the ability to like, Stay, stay stable from pelvis to thoracic spine, like in that, in that area. Um, just yeah, that stability right there is really big. Um, but so I can, I, you can load the landline press up pretty decent. Um, and I'm really just trying to drive home movement quality with that. So it's less like I'm not having, like, I'm not having most guys that they have my press like, pounds. Like, if you do that, it's awesome. That's really good. And I don't, I'm not against it. But like I'm really just trying to, especially for guys that have been playing for a while, um, and they're kind of getting like some some grossness in the back. I didn't know the scientific word for that. <laughs> uh, just just like some like not I don't want to say dysfunctional um, patterns, but like some some, some you, know, you know bumps in the road, like in, in like the the scapula. It's not as as greased and moving as well as possible. I, I like to just get them on the landmark press and have them. Even if I have to put my hand on the scat and kind of guide um, into upper rotation so that they kind of get the feeling of, hey, this is what it's supposed to feel like. So if I can do that and I can like, put my thumb right at the, the shoulder blade and kind of just show them how to move it or where to move it, when to move it, um, that, that just provides connection in the brain, kind of a mind uh, connection that they can like, go back to your and, and oh, this is what it's going to feel like. So it kind of just drives the movement pattern better. Um, and if you do want to look at it, I, I'm a fan of like uh, the, the like heavy or eccentric, right? So, like, so two hands come up and then you can come down and do unilateral. And so the eccentric part is going to be the heavier part. Your body's going to be able to handle that a little bit easier. So I'm a big fan of that. In terms of overhead pulling, um, I'm a really big fan of it, obviously, um, but we have to be careful. Um, I prefer like the chin up over the pull up. So that's the so, yep. Yeah, little yeah, supinated yeah. action. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't. I didn't know. I didn't know. Or like, no pronated, supinated. Sorry, guys. Underhand grip. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Underhand grip. <laughs> um, so I prefer that. Um, so it's a little bit more shoulder friendly. Um. So like I always had that, that in the back of my head, you know, what's a little bit more shoulder friendly than than not, you know. So, um, but that, but some some guys, you know, like if if they're super healthy and they're all for it, and then we're off season, uh, I'll 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 throw with pull ups if they're capable of doing it. But for the most part, like the greater percentage of the population, I would do like a underhand grip. Uh, just because it's a little bit more short friendly. And in season, if I do that, um, it'll be uh, the, the chin or the underhand grip. Uh, but I, I also really like um, putting, putting people on the cable just in my wish at a Kaiser. If Kaiser uh, people are listening, I will, you know, promote the hell out of you guys to give me one for free. Uh, but uh, at Kaiser. <laughs> sure, Kaiser's <laughs> tuning in. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna throw the at Kaiser in that soon. Why not? Get, Why not? Get this, get hook up. We'll tag him. Yeah, yeah, for sure, it's gonna work. <laughs> I, I just heard about it. Uh, so like, I, I I'll, I'll do like a half kneeling, uh, one on high rope, uh, and we'll it's do like reverse landmine press. Yeah, it, no, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So like, a lot of times it's like, so I try to connect when I 
explain exercises, show exercises. Like that's actually what I'll kind of say. It's like the reverse land line press. So you start in the extended part of the land line and you kind of do the opposite in land terms as possible. Um, so I, I really, it's a really good exercise that I can do you know, in a textual box. boxes. And that's kind of like a hybrid um, vertical that I can, I can get into. So the, like the staples of the, like the, the vertical pole that, that go out. Awesome. Daily basis. All right, cool. Let's take us into that last question. Right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Last question. So we're talking about you coaching, teaching the younger athletes um, coming in, especially in baseball. So specialization in general. So a lot of people, your parents maybe people are looking at Tyler Wood or Tyler Wood or Lady athletes, and they're thinking my kids specialize as early as possible. Do you think there's a certain point where an athlete should cut off all the sports they're like going for and just specialize in one thing and train for that one thing? Or what are you generally? Oh, man, it's an awesome, uh, awesome topic. Uh, and there's this little fallback here. So in the beginning, I worked at All-Star Baseball Camp. Right? So like a big point of contention for me was these guys um, were driving on the fact that these kids needed to do baseball all year round. Right. And I get it. That's like, I'm not saying that they shouldn't practice all year round. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm not saying that, guys. But like the way they were pushing it was saying these nine, 10 year old kids had to be on travel teams from like February to November. And then from November to February, they need to be getting two lessons a day for like lessons a, a week for an hour. Like, yo, man, chill with that. And then like, I, was, I, I, wouldn't, I couldn't bring myself to push that. And, because I'm a huge proponent, I'm a huge supporter of let's play as much as we can in terms of sport. Like, let's, let's play as many sports as we can for as long as we can. If you are gifted enough to play sports at a decent level, multiple sports, sports do, do, let's take advantage of it. It makes you a better athlete. And there's, there's research to show you. It makes you a better athlete. In my opinion, it makes you a better teammate. It makes you a better competitor. Uh, so I played. Baseball, obviously, but I just played baseball growing up, and like I needed time off from baseball. You know, there's a I, I've seen this so many times, and I, I hate it. The burnout is real. Real burnout is real. I would see that my job at, at the academy, and like that's what was breaking, and like that's what was breaking my heart. I couldn't push it because I couldn't push it because I'm on this, on this at them all the time. Like, oh, yeah, baseball, baseball. But, dude, let's, let's let them, them get some like riding. Like, and I know a lot of really freaking good at baseball and like 12 and 13 that stopped playing at 15 because it's all they did was play baseball, practice baseball. And, and there's very few, there's some, like the 1%, the 1 percent that that's what you did. Like, I was a I mean, it was four years old, swinging off club, and he's a nice And yeah, he became the greatest ever to do it. But like, he's a very 1%. These Olympic athletes are very well percent. There's 99% of the kids that specialize in their sport that didn't do that, and that didn't make it to where they could have made it, because that's all they did. That's the only sport they played for the longest time, and they got burned out, and they never got to realize the potential. Like, I, I was going to uh, Urban Meyer, right? The coach, college football. Um, he, like, cheated at every match, but, like, <laughs> there. Um, and so, like, when he was at a high state, somebody asked, like, who do you recruit? And I want to say, like, I, I'm, like, parking these numbers. I should have came with, like, specific <laughs> But so it's, like, a crazy, crazy percentage, right? So he had, I think it was 53 recruits to one year. And he gave the number 48 of them. And that number was 48 of the 53 played multiple sports at a varsity level in high school. So if Urban Meyer, who wins the national champions, championships at the most competitive sport in college, is recruiting pretty much primarily only multi-sport athletes, there's got to be something to do. Mm -hmm. So if you look at Ben Phillips, Tim Corbin is a coach there um, for baseball. He came out and said, you know, I recruit multi-sport athletes, and I recruit kids from the north. 
And that's a big deal. It might not sound like to you guys. You're like, all right, cool. Let's see. Racist. It's like it's not the union. Better. It's not. It's, it's <laughs> the kids in the South play baseball all year round, right? Because of the weather. The beautiful uh, weather. Comes. They're playing all year round, so they get beat up. It's just the way. It's the nature of the beast, right? You play more games, play more competition. You're gonna get beat up. Your body's gonna get take more of a beating. The kids up north, what do they do? Hey, man, it's snowing, dude. People in Milwaukee, or they probably have like eight feet of snow right now. Even in Pennsylvania, it gets snow early, cold. I'm not trying to play playing a baseball game. So we go into play other sports. So we're more likely to be multi square or shut down, right? And so, like, hey, when they get to college, they're going to be fresher. They're going to have, you know, a, a better foundation because they're not just throwing, 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 playing a sport and grinding out. Big thing is over series, right? Like, if you're playing a sport, that one specific movement pattern is getting. Just drill it, you know, and it starts taking away all the movement pattern. So that's what I'm saying. To a better athlete, like when I play basketball, or when one guy plays basketball and baseball, like there's all the things that you do in baseball that you don't do in basketball. Right. There's things in basketball that you don't, like you don't see jumping too much in baseball. You know what I mean? Like they do, yeah. but it's not like a staple of the game. So if I'm playing basketball and I'm going up, to dunk, which is that? Okay. So like if I'm going to block a shot, or my guy's going. Dunk, he's jumping, he's driving an athletic adaptation, right? So, like, he's getting better as an athlete, he's doing things that baseball players don't really do. And that's just going to be creating a more well rounded app. And then, I don't know about you, but I would like well rounded athletes. Even if I'm extremely good at baseball, I'm, I'm trying, trying to take the sport because I want to be a better athlete so that I can turn it over and better. Um, so, like, a big Part of parents, both the parents are trying to drive it. Big thing with parents is that, um, oh, it's so important to get a skill. Like, if I don't have my kids playing baseball all year round or whatever, they're not going to be good enough skill wise to play in college. Right? First of all, parents, right? You are not the same factor that plays like sports in college. Like, unfortunately, some kids, they have to do it so that the parents, you know, oh, my dad would be so upset if I don't. Dude, it's not – let the kids suck for about two months ago, right? Don't live through the kid, all right? right. Uh, it's going to be easier to pick up a skill. Like, look at Kyler Murray, mm-hmm. right? So, so like, Kyler Murray, you'll know, drafted the first round in baseball, and then he was drafted first overall in football. As a football player, it's nice, right? So, he went to Oklahoma, played baseball, had a really crappy first year. And then he was like a little better second year, but people thought like, yo, he's gonna be so good. He's got all the tools. Like he didn't even hit 300 college. And people still wanted into that because once he was already an elite athlete, he was already insanely good um, in terms of movement and explosiveness. And yeah, by playing multiple right? So once he would get drafted in one, this is why he's gonna focus on that one. And he said, like, I know once I focus on that one, I'm going to get so much better. Because for years, I've been doing multiple skills. So it's a lot easier to be able to pick up that skill once you become a really good athlete. And you have, like, body knowledge. Or if you're set qualities are good. Like, you have body awareness. It's going to be a lot easier to pick up these, these qualities and skills specific to the sport once you have really good awareness. You know? Like, yeah, you want to, you want to kind of get it. skill acquisition. It's the, the window of learning as a kid, and you drill that at home, it'd be good. But, dude, if you're a good athlete, you have really good, like, uh, athletic capacity and good body awareness, you're going to pick up the skill of baseball, like a baseball swim, when you're focused on just that, and you leave football or whatever behind. You know, so, and it makes you better. Like, big thing, like, you might be really good as a wrestler, but like really crappy as a football player, not really crappy, just like a marginal football player. So it gives you like, the idea of, hey, I'm the main in this sport, I'm the alpha of this sport, but then like, I have the team and I have to, you know, the dirty part of this team, just, mm-hmm. just to make my video, you know, just be, to be part of the team and, and, and like you know, support the really guys. Like, it's a different So you have to learn how to like deal with different roles and different diversity. And 
I learned going to be better than me. Because you're not always in the And like, that's something I learned from high school to college. That, and every time you go, they do become a smaller fish in a bigger pond. You know, only the real freaks are just like always the big fish. So it teaches you a little bit of humility. It teaches you how to deal with, with different types of teammates. Because base baseball players are, are, are a lot, lot different than basketball guys. guys. Yeah. And they're a lot, a lot wired a lot different than, you know, tennis players. So you get to learn how to deal with different people, um, different coaches, um, and like different officials. So, I mean, it's, it's like a, I, I get so upset when, when, when parents are like, oh, my kid's just going to play baseball from now on. And, and so, so that's my, one reason why I have my job. I'm a big person of, okay, play as many sports as you can. As long as you like, yeah. you know, as long as, as, long as, as long you enjoy it and you're getting something out of it, like, go ahead. And it's, it's up to the kid when anybody wants to decide to stop fighting. Right. You know, it, that's the thing. It's like, it's not the, not the parents. It's, unless it's like, all right, you, your grades are good. Like, mm-hmm. we got to minimize what you do outside of the classroom so that we can maximize what you do inside of it. Okay, I get it. Okay, then you got to go where, where you got to prioritize. But, it, but like, if, if everything in the vacuum is good, like, let the kid play as long as he can, as long as he wants, as long as she wants. You know, there's, there's no... Like, nothing but bad it's come from it, in my opinion. You know? That's my rant. Beautiful. Yeah. All right. Let's wrap this thing up. Yeah, we're sorry. sorry. We're two hours here. No, yeah, great. sorry. So it's like a 12-part series, probably. <laughs> I, so, I, I uh, no. Yeah. Real, real quick, tell us, uh, tell us specifically what you offer here. Uh, some some people might be excited, and they're like, so I'm just going to come in and sign up, and that's what it's going to be. Sure. So, so like, I don't want just to deal with athletes. Uh, you know, I, I don't know. You know, the, the, the idea that I just portray is like, wow. I do do adult classes um, for sure, like group fitness. Um, there's not like a lot of bands and jumping around though. Like, it's more like actual like things that could probably make you a better. So there's no Zumba here. No Zumba. Sometimes I listen to the MDMs. That might be my surprise that. Like, my, 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 um, I, I offer classes for adults, um, small group, um, 6 p.m. every day, Monday through Friday, and 10 a.m. Monday through Friday. Um, then, if you have a, if you're a young athlete, if you're a parent of a young athlete, uh, you can find me on Instagram. <laughs> There's a reason. I know you have to performance. But I, it's an individualized program for every athlete that comes in here. Um, it might be with a group of like three, four kids, um, but everything is tailored to the individual. Um, and I do like twice a week, three times a week, depending on training age, needs, time of season, stuff like that, and what you're able to do schedule wise. Um, and that's, yeah, that's one thing. Um, but then I also like, go with the regular, like, Joe like, you know, if you want to come in and you want to get healthy, um, you want to get your strong, you want to do whatever. Uh, we're here for you. And like, like a big, big thing, thing I want to mention, big selling point, the, the big thing I wanted to do was provide everything in one spot, right? So I wanted to provide the athlete, the parent, the whatever, the ability to um, get the nutrition under check. So I brought in Mike, and Mike, Mike works with my people. I wanted to provide training, with training. I don't want to bring any guys, girls that are good trainers and coaches. They can drive that. And I also want to do like a physical therapy um, rehab type feel to it. And so, you know, I brought in a PT that does work with my people when he, like, like nine year old time, but when I need them, set it up, it's here. Because um, I wanted that whole other one where people can go and get that experience. They don't have to go to like 40 different, you know, spots and around the map to, to get it instead of just coming to this place. Where everybody's on the same page, they all have the same, um, like the same goal of treating and, and improving and stuff like that. Then I also want to be able to, to to provide people that I know are out there continuing their education. Right? Like I don't want to like, have to send a guy out to so like a PT, yeah, like a like a like a mill, you know, saying like we're like, yeah, third at a time. We're like, like oh, yeah. Um, do like uh, yeah, parts, so, like, yeah, just like driving more problems. Um, I wanted somebody that you know, I wanted people that were like 
up to date with the relevant you know literature and and I know they plan to get better at what they do so that we can provide the best. You know? So like that's a big thing. So if you're achy, whatever, come in, we can we can get the back right back. back. Uh, we're in South King, uh, which is in Bucks County, but it's really close to Montgomery County. It's, it's not a bad spot. Forty five square feet place here, so it's like a big spot, a room to, to move around and, and get better. So Check, yeah. Check them out. And I appreciate the love from you guys. I'm honored to be the first person. I'm sure you found somebody better. We got some nice map gear here. Oh, the gear. Um, the freshness. Follow, follow map on social media. We got we got some more gear yeah, coming yeah. out kind of soon, kind of soon, don't we? Yeah, yeah. we got we got yeah. some new dresses. Yes, I don't know. Look out for that. Um, follow them on social media. It's so fresh. Uh, come check out the gym and good tunes here. You know, super all good around good times. All time. around good time. Environment here. Um, last thing, unrelated. Uh, since we are a legit podcast, uh, we're basically on par with the Joe Rogan experience, and as <laughs> such, we have our very own Jamie, uh, which is my absolutely wonderful girlfriend Emily, who. Basically looks up stuff for us and answers questions that we don't have knowledge to. For example, like when we talk about whether you should run from a bear or play dead, and we don't know. Uh, she fills, play fills us in on the answers, so we're very lucky to have her. But basically, getting across, uh, we are a top-tier fitness podcast. Uh, one of the best. We have everything you possibly need. Possibly. Stay tuned possibly. for future guests. Check, Check out, out Matt. Yeah. Check out Matt. Melly, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. So much, guys. Uh, sorry for rambling, guys. I know. I'm sorry for <laughs> looking like this. All right. We will catch you on the next episode, whenever that may be. But just uh, stay posted, and uh, we'll hope to uh, get that information to you when it comes out. All right. Very scared. <laughs>